For the vast amount of time that people have been on the planet, we've thought about the ocean as being so immense, so bountiful, so resilient, that we thought it was impossible for human activity to have any impact on it. We thought that the ocean was just too big to fail. But the last couple of decades have told us that is simply not the case. The ocean is really central to the functioning of the planet. The ocean controls our weather systems around the world, which crops we can grow, where we can grow them, the frequency and intensity of the storms that we see, whether we have droughts or floods, whether we have increased wildfires. The ocean provides over half of the oxygen that we breathe. The ocean absorbs much of the excess carbon dioxide we produce. It's a key part of economic recovery, but also economic opportunity. And it's in our best interests to take care of the ocean, make sure that it is healthy and productive and resilient, because it is indeed so critical to our future. More and more of the challenges we face in the ocean are what we call transdisciplinary. So they cross over all the disciplines. So to really solve that challenge, you need to bring people together. And that's what we're going to do in the new building. In the laboratory spaces, in the office spaces, they're meant to be very collaborative. And we're purposely going to put scientists from different disciplines shoulder to shoulder alongside those graduate students and undergraduates that are going to be learning from them. And in fact, we have an artist studio embedded with the research labs because we want to also bring the arts and humanities and the social sciences to study the ocean and coasts. And another thing I'm looking forward to is that we have not had a 300-person state-of-the-art auditorium we built it with a large wooden floor because we want to have theater performances and we want to have music. We're going to have scientific lectures and I'm just looking forward to the many events that are going to happen in the new building and the new auditorium and welcome the community in and get the students hooked. And then we have the Innovation Lab. And this is a really unique addition that there's nothing like it on the coast. It's a shop with state-of-the-art fabrication and manufacturing tools, prototyping tools, 3D printers, computer-aided design, CNC cutters. And the expertise will be there to help people solve problems. There is no marine science store you go to to buy anything. Like everything that we use as scientists that's in the ocean, somebody made, and it's often the team researching that made it. And so until this innovation lab was built as part of the new marine studies building, we didn't have a saw to cut metal. We didn't have a CNC machine. We didn't have 3D printers. This new innovation lab allows a lot of our scientists and engineering staff that work with them to create those kind of new devices. They're gonna help us understand the world in a different way. The Gladys Valley building is going to allow all of the Marine Mammal Institute to be co-located. And so for the first time ever in the history of the Institute, we will all be located together in that beautiful building. It takes advantage of the latest technology to facilitate our science. It's going to be a real game changer for the Marine Mammal Institute. This building represents a new age. Working side by side, we can push things forward much faster than each of us can do alone. And we are gonna make a difference. And then the other important aspect of the design in this building is given where we're located, we design this building to serve as a vertical evacuation, even in as much as a 9.0 earthquake. And this design was incorporated overall such that we have a ramp that goes up over the top of the auditorium to the top of the third floor, puts up to a thousand people in a safe location. And we designed it explicitly for this to be a demonstration project so others can look at when you have to build in these sorts of conditions, how do you do it? And this serves that purpose. Funding this building required a lot of different things to come together. 
First, we got fortunately a very early win with our challenge grant from the Valley Foundation. And they challenged us to raise additional capital philanthropically, an additional five million, and then also to get matching bonding from the state. At that point, a target of $50 million and gave us three years to do that. And that for a coastal environment was a pretty tall order. And it was just remarkable how quickly we were able to come to that. The people stood up and contributed to this. They should be really, really proud of what they invested in. I want to thank all the donors to the building because it allowed us to do something truly unique. And I'm very thankful that you understood the idea of the Marine Studies Initiative, that we could bring different groups of people to look at the ocean and coasts. And we're going to do it in this amazing building, one that you helped support. And maybe the biggest thanks is from the students, because they're going to be in a place that we work together finding solutions. The coolest thing about the ocean to me is the fact that so much of it hasn't been explored and so much to develop and study in the future. That isn't to say the ocean isn't intimidating or that it isn't daunting. But because of that, that's what also makes me so excited. On top of that, the ocean is so important. I want the ocean to be something that people can appreciate in the future and what it gives us and what we can do for it.